All right, you ready to do this, Lee? It's rock and roll. All right. All right. Yeah. All right. So five, four, three, two, and one. All right, folks, welcome back to the Trauma Therapist Podcast. Very excited to have my guest today, Lee Little. Lee, welcome. Welcome, guy. Thank you. All right, man. Thanks so much for, for joining me today. So Lee's a mental health worker. He's also an author. Uh, statistics show that there are more than 45 million survivors of childhood sexual abuse in North America, and that one in five boys on this continent are sexually abused before age 18. The experience can unleash a bitter struggle for connection, and it can leave survivors grappling with the debilitating fallout that ranges from alcoholism and drug addiction to mental illness and a general failure to thrive. My guest today, Lee, brings hope for healing to millions of broken families through his lyrical memoir, Wounded Healer. This book unveils a profound yet raw story of Lee's journey through childhood sexual trauma and the debilitating experiences as an alcoholic that eventually followed. He tracks the shattering feelings of isolation and bitterness that haunted his days along with his conscious mind's demanding desire to numb his memories of the hideous day when his innocence was stolen from him. All right, um, Lee, first of all, thank you so much for, again, for, for being here. I really appreciate it. Thank you. I'm really grateful and honored to be here on the show. Appreciate that. Um, yeah. Come on, this, this is crazy. <laughs> I mean, there's no way to to break it down, right? This is horrific. It's it's. I mean, even on this podcast, the trauma the trauma therapist podcast, this stuff is hard to talk about. But before we get going, and I know we're going to get going here, share with our listeners where you're from, initially, originally, and where you're calling from now. Yeah, so um, I originally I was born in uh, Edmonton, Alberta, which is Western Canada, actually a little north of Oregon. <laughs> so, okay. um, and uh, my family, I, I grew up in a, a, a large family. My uh, grandmother had eleven children, Irish uh, Irish Canadian family, and uh, so. But uh, my my family, uh, my mother and I moved from Ontario, from Alberta to Ontario, and in, in, I think in the mid mid eighties, 1984 and to Hamilton, Ontario in Canada. And then, uh, we, uh, we set up shop there and that's where I kind of lived most of my life and, uh, went through school and, uh, everything else that a young person goes through and, uh, learning to thrive. And, uh, and then I ended up uh, getting into school with a uh, university and studying social work and, and in furthermore into clinical behavioral sciences, which led me into the field that I'm in now, which is doing mental health counseling. And I found my way up in Northern Canada in a little First Nation community called Attawapiskat First Nation, uh, working with uh, the native population up here, very small community. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Um, all right, walk us through how you got to this point were such that you you've written this book so when i first started about 25 years ago i started my my recovery journey from from alcoholism and i was i was quite young when i when i i found out that i had a a, a problem with alcohol um and uh so i sort of hit some bottoms they say you know with with addictions um and uh it led me into, you know, getting uh, getting some support with with my addictions with alcohol, and um, and then I just sort of started to unfold with my recovery, and then things started to surface that of things that I was hide not hiding, but difficult things, as you mentioned about my early childhood uh, experience with early childhood trauma. And I started to write a lot, like a journal. I did a lot of journaling and a lot of journaling and writing and, and different people that were my mentors and supports along the way, going through my own therapy, my own personal therapy and, and, and groups, men's groups, uh, and just continuing to dig away at my healing journey. Mm -hmm. And all of those diaries and, and, and journals, I've actually compiled it all together and started to write my own personal memoir, which is the wounded healer. Okay, let me, let me uh, interject only one second here. Yeah. Lee. <clears throat> Excuse me. Yeah. So you started to realize or you started to uh, what drink a lot? 
when you were how old? How, when did this start? So I, I would say that my, my drinking started when I was probably 12 or 13 years old. Okay. So super young, <laughs> obviously. Okay. Yes, super young. Okay. And um, and things just took off from there. You started drinking more and more. And you, at what point did you realize that you had, that you were an alcoholic? You were an addict in a sense. Or you say addicted uh, to alcohol. I think, you know, when I turned, so I drank from 12 to 13 and it, it, it sort of escalated over time, you know, through high school. And I started to notice that I was just getting so sick from like physically sick from drinking yeah. alcohol. And it wasn't so much the amount that I drank, but what it did to me when I drank. Because there's a lot of misconceptions about addiction that, you know, that people think if you, you, you an alcoholic is somebody that just drinks a lot of alcohol, but that's not entirely the case. In my experience, I find that it's just what it does to you mm. that has the impact. And so it, it progressed to a point where I became s sick. And also, I also, uh, you know, it became suicidal near the end of my drinking. Um, and uh, that was very frightening to go through that as well. So All right. now, while you were going through this in while you had started out drinking 12, 13, and so forth, was there any sense of why you were drinking? In other words, what you were why you were drinking yeah period that's a good question i think from the the, the general res response or, or um thoughts that i have around that is that i i sort of probably had a bit of awareness that i was i was trying to deal with something that i could not understand that was inside of me and by this point i actually had no recollection or really clear idea of um any early childhood trauma trauma stuff that would that happened for me um and so i i but i just knew there was something wasn't right mm -hmm. and if you talk to a lot of addicts they will always say that there's a feeling that something just doesn't feel right. Mm -hmm. And so because of that, that in that, that notice notification that we have inside of us, there's a, there's a sense of trying to run away from this, this thing that this very phenomena of uh, something that's in there that, you know, when I started to get a little more aware of my addictions, I realized, okay, well, maybe I'm trying to use this to, to not look at something that mm -hmm. is deep inside of me that I don't want to look at. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, if I may um, ask you, from what point to what point did the trauma abuse occur? How old so, were you? Um, uh, I, I was uh, sexually abused by a male a babysitter when I was, I think, around probably four or five. Okay. Um, and uh, and so that 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 was something that, in some of my own research, like with my work and also my personal experience, I realized that uh, as the, the common thing is, is that the earlier that a child has been traumatized the more difficult it is and a lot of mm -hmm. like uh, things start to develop at that time. Um, interestingly enough, I'll just mention as a matter of fact, when I looked at my addictions in my writing, my memoir, I started, things started to open up for me as well too. And I recall, and I write about this and remember, I recall a time where I had uh, started sniffing model glue or, or a little bit of glue when, uh, probably when I was, seven or eight you know and and so something to get me and numb me numb those feelings right so this is even before drinking alcohol i i, I noticed that some of the other behaviors of me trying to escape mm -hmm. from those painful things that a child goes through was was starting to like happen for me right mm. so you start drinking things evolve at what point do you start your healing journey how does that unfold for you? So I, I feel that I started my healing journey before I think I quit drinking alcohol. And the reason why I say that, because I really wanted to highlight in, in this, my, my memoir, The Wounded Healer, is that 
creativity and imagination in my writing and uh, my interest in, in music earlier on in my life was something that was like a saving grace for me. So I feel that I started my healing journey a little bit before with my creative imagination and, and writing and drawing and painting. And, and even though I was still drinking along those, those, uh, those days, you know, um, uh, I think that did something for me when I was, when I was younger and I was a very creative person. Right. 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 Does yeah. there become a, a uh, now ex excuse me if my, my questions <laughs> seem really naive here. That's but okay. That's <laughs> was, was there a point where you said to yourself, you know, um, where you needed to kind of take another step in your healing journey and say, and, and say, and said, you know, I need help. I need to see someone, you know, whatever this thing going on inside me is that's, you know, uh, painful or I'm running from, I need to, I need to seek some, seek out some help here. That's a great question. And, and what I found was that um, although I can do a lot of things in my healing journey in terms of my own trauma, I realized that I was having a lot of difficulty forming connections with people. So I was having a lot of intimacy issues. And, and that's not just in the sense of like, you know, intimacy physically. It was more like, how can I connect with people intellectually, emotionally? Mm -hmm. Where's that emotional intelligence? Uh, you know, all of these things that were very frightening for me that I realized in order for me to survive living uh, the trauma experience that I have, I need to connect with people in a healthy way. And I, what I found was is very common with a lot of trauma is what I, I started to see with my behaviors and my thinking and my emotions was that I was getting so close to really make, making a, a really positive connection with somebody. And then I sabotaged it because I probably didn't feel like I had the skills to maintain a level of intimacy that I think is necessary for all of us humans, right? We all, mm -hmm. we all want to have a, 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 a human connection. And, and that was the, 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 the part that I found that I really needed to step up my healing journey and dig a little more deeper into why I wasn't forming connections with other people. So how did, how did you answer that question of why? <laughs> so, so therapy helped me to look at um, being vulnerable again. And we know that in a lot of our trauma work and a lot of like stuff that's coming on in the last few years that the word vulnerability is like such a huge buzzword. Mm -hmm. And, it, and it, it just it, it just encompasses so many levels. And it's, it's such a broad uh, experience of this idea of vulnerability with our human emotions. So I think what I had to, to do was I had to sort of retrain my brain and retrain my emotions and sort of reparent myself through some therapy and through my own deeper contemplation and self-reflection, self-awareness to allow myself to go to places where I had to risk getting hurt or risk being harmed because what I learned was with childhood and going through that, I didn't, I just didn't, I didn't have those skills to stay long enough in places where I can feel vulnerable to have those raw emotions that a normal, maybe a normal person that hasn't, hasn't gone through trauma can experience like regularly. Mm -hmm. um, so that's kind of what I found. I had to start really put, putting myself into uncomfortable situations in ver various scenarios with uh, with people, with things, with work and life situations where I can build up that resilience, as they say, that's so important for trauma, right. trauma recovery. At, at yeah. what point or you know, during what time did it, became, it become conscious to you that you had been abused? I think when I look back, that's a good question. I look back, you know, I probably had some little fleeting conscious moments, what I call sort of moments of clarity, where I knew that there was something that had occurred that was wrong, you know, that happened to me. Um, and of course, I kind of like just know, you know, that's, you know, not real. And, and, you know, there's a period of trauma recovery that a lot of us even if you're learning professionally, you know, we go through memory and, you know, when I read uh, 
the body keeps the score. There's a lot of stuff there that's about memory. Is this real? Is this not real? So there was a period of really coming to terms consciously what had happened. Um, and I think when it started to really occur for me that it was a real thing was that I felt, I felt things in my body. I felt tension and anxiety in my body that there was, I could not make sense of where it was coming from. So with healing and my own uh, therapy, I had to dig away at that as well as to see like, where, where is this anxiety coming from? You know, the, the very common thing that a lot of in my circles with professionally and personally, when we look at trauma um, and understanding it more is like uh, that confusion of, of, you know, uh, of confusion of like outside my external world is where I, I'm successful in my job and my career. I have reasonably good relationships with other people. Uh, Money is good. Material things are good, but there's still an empty thing that's going on inside of me that I can't make that. I can't fill that void with all of these external things that are going on. So I had to do that work internally. You know, I just want to say that y you are pretty and I'm pretty incredible person, Lee. I mean, sitting here, having gone through what you went through, um, the, the journey that you've been through, you know, taking it on to write your story and come on this podcast and talk about what you went through. Um, I just want to say, uh, it, it, I admire your, your, your courage. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. That does. I yeah. really do. Thank How you. did you get to a point where you're able to sit here and seriously and, and talk about this um, and keep it together? <laughs> well, I often say to my friends, sometimes I'm like that duck that's on the water. Yep. <laughs> you know, on the top, it, on the top, it seems so calm and collective, but underneath the, 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 uh, uh, the legs and the, the fins are just are, are going a mile a minute. Right. And to a certain um, degree, like, we're all like that, right? I mean, if we break it down, but. Yeah. I think it's a good question. And, you know, sometimes I don't know myself, you know, where that courage comes from. Uh, I, I think what I can say is that in the last couple of years or so, when I really started to, uh, you know, bring this memoir that I want to uh, launch to the world my main motivation is 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 to reach out to to men that are survivors of childhood trauma and also anybody that's experiencing childhood trauma um that you know there there is hope i guess and and and, and that helps me understanding that there's purpose in my life because the more i kind of share my story now and and get out and share about what happened personally i feel that um, it, it, it always sort of just helps me realize that there is purpose in my life because for a long time, I did not see it and I actually did not want to, to be here. <laughs> so that's part of what keeps me going. I think And these connections now and having the courage to, you know, is, is to basically an exercise for me to be vulnerable again, to uh, talk about the man that that's that the man that's inside here that I'm trying to figure out as I, as I walk this uh, path. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. As you progressed, as you moved along your, your healing journey, what helped you? What did you find? Who did you find that uh, particularly was helpful to you? Well, earlier on, I mean, I, I somehow was able to reach out in the phone book and look at, okay, uh, child you know trauma therapy you know back in Hamilton and uh, a wonderful organization uh, a community child abuse council actually out of Hamilton and I think they're still running um, I, I ended up you know just uh, making an appointment you know making an appointment and I think I was probably just after I recovered from like or started my healing journey with with addictions I realized I needed to get onto this. So I started to talk with a therapist and go through just kind of feeling safe, you know, mm -hmm. feeling safe with uh, what was going on. 
and uh, doing a little bit of like, you know, homework kind of and learning and really educating myself around what happened. And I think that gave me a lot of comfort. So I was, you know, I was really learning a lot by reading things about what what a per, what a child goes through. And then it just seemed like doors opened up more and more for me to connect with other people that I trusted because trust is such a huge, important thing for a person that, you know, is wanting to heal in this way and sometimes I, I i learned it the hard way too sometimes you learn things the hard way where you open up to people that may not you know be totally trusting to to what, what you're sharing so we learn those things too you know it's not always an easy path when you start to you know to recover from trauma but um, you know, I found the way where I had mentors and really important people that simply just listened to me and encouraged me, just in, individuals like yourself, just telling me, you know, it's a courageous thing you're doing and, and keep doing it, you know, that type of thing. Mm -hmm. When uh, when you reached out to uh, a therapist, did you do so knowing that uh, you'd been traumatized or did you reach out to someone just saying, I need to see a therapist and through that process, realize that trauma had occurred? That's a good, that's a really good question. I, I think for the most part, it's actually, it's a process because in a lot of time, in a lot of times in the beginning, it's when I reflect back now, um, I, I kind of didn't really know what was going on with me, but I just still knew that, that I needed to, like you know feel like i was supported mm -hmm. um because you know uh I, I always look at it this way and i talk about this in my book there's almost a journey where uh like there's little bits and pieces that are disclosed and and maybe that's the brain's natural way of like unfolding and understanding and having awareness about what's going on with us i think it's the brain is an amazing mechanism that way and and i think maybe it'll it'll just hold stories or memories for you that you that will be prepared to disclose things for yourself as you journey and open up this door and that perspective that you can contain as a person that you know, that I'm able to sort of feel like okay I can take this on and learn it and the reason why I say that is because it's interesting in my research with trauma like professionally um I think that you know uh there's only a certain amount of stuff that we can learn that we can contain, mm -hmm. I guess, if you want to say it that way, without, without overwhelming ourselves with so much information. And that's where the tricky balance is, is to try and find, okay, like sometimes I thought, okay, maybe I'm going to learn more than what I, I like, I want to learn more about everything and fix myself quickly. I wanted to like, you know, find that solution so that I can heal and move on with my life. But the reality of trauma, what my experience is, is that it is a piecemeal thing. It's a process. And who knows, there might be still deeper and darker things that about my trauma that I have to encounter as in my life that I don't know about yet. Mm -hmm. yeah. So the book, as you said, came about as a result or uh, of a compilation of writings. At what point did you say, I want to create this book, write this book, have it be a book and get it out there. Well, I've always loved writing and I love poetry and I love reading and, and, and uh, I, I kept my diaries. Uh, I had probably about 15 or 20, you know, in the 24 years that I've been kind of keeping a journal. And uh, so I thought, you know, I'm going to go through and initially I started to just want to go through and look at the poetry and some of the creative writing that I that I had that I wanted to to make compilations of. But then I started to like in, in the within the process of writing about like or, or, you know, going back and reading some of my stuff, I started to realize, wait a minute, there's a healing component here with writing my personal story. And a lot of individuals we know that have write, written memoirs or uh, uh, anything about their own personal tragedies and stuff, you know, like the writing itself is a healing uh tool to, to to you know have therapy from so I think I started to like just make a nice tea for myself I went to a tea shop in Dundas Ontario called Taylor's Tea House and I used to sit there and I brought a little journal and I started like uh, you know making things more formal and and uh, that's how it started to get born born out of that and I love that I love the experience of it it was very um, uh, what you would call like not lethargic but uh, 
Cathartic. There's a word I'm trying to find. Yes, that's right. Cathartic. Cathartic. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. And who's the book for? And what do you want them to get from the book? What's what's the message in a sense? Well, like I said, I think the book primarily is for male survivors of early childhood trauma or early childhood sexual trauma. And um, beyond that, it's also going to be for anybody that has experienced early childhood trauma or even trauma like, you know, through adulthood. So I'm hoping to um, launch the book uh, this year in the fall. Um, and, And I'm hoping that the story and the message of my personal um, experiences can sort of show people and offer hope that um, what that person might be experiencing is very normal, of course. But there's also a creative element to how we we survive in a lot of ways. And I, I want to sort of like research more about this and I want to understand more about that. I want to like look at that resilient component mm-hmm. that we talk about in trauma. I really want to break it down and look at other aspects of how people survive through trauma. Mm -hmm. Yeah. When you sit up here, you know, when I look at you, I, a part of me thinks of myself, you know, I was bullied as a young kid and it it just jacked me up. It really impacted the trajectory of my life. Like yourself in, in terms of how I showed up in relationships and self-esteem. And it took me a while to, um, not only talk about it, but talk about it in in more detail and be more open. And I guess own the fact that this happened to me. You know, as a guy, what's that been like for you? Have you has it been challenging for you to talk about the fact that you were abused? Absolutely. I, I, it, I mean, it, it has been very challenging because, you know, like part of the fear that I had about disclosing and talking about myself as a person and what I've gone through is that I, I it's, a, it's, a, it's another lesson in exercise and vulnerability because I, part of my fear initially was when I first well, wanted to write the book was that, well, if I do this now, then people won't want to be a part of me because they'll see how broken I am. Mm. Right. So that there's that imposter syndrome that comes up or those old narrative things that come up about how I cope with, like, you know, uh, living my life now. And so I had to overcome that. I had to overcome those old narratives and, and to say, like, well, you know what, what, what helps me, guys, that I just simply say, like, you know, we are all broken in some way. <laughs> you know, we are all broken in some way. And maybe my brokenness is a more severe and uh, but that doesn't make that doesn't make it more uh, less or, or more than you know the other people that experience trauma or brokenness in our in our life. Right. So yeah. Okay. So um, let me just reintroduce you here. I'm speaking with Lee Little, mental health worker and author. The book is called Wounded Healer. Now is this book out? Can people get it yet? Can they pre-order it? What's the story? So, so I'm in the process now of, of, of just really working on some marketing stuff to, to, to set up the, the book launch, which I'm hoping will be uh, released on Amazon in the fall of this year. Okay. And, uh, and uh, so I, I think uh, that that's where we're at with, 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 uh, with launching the memoir. So there's a last little few minute, little things that I'm, I'm going to be taking care of with that. But I am excited. I'm hoping that uh, that, that uh, I'll have a, a, a pre-launch or even more information about uh, the book. And uh, people can always uh, just follow me on my website as well, which I do have um, a blog, and that's leelidle.com. Uh, and uh, you can always reach me through uh, contacting me through my website as well. Okay. Okay. Um, now, when you get going contact me because I'll do what I can to help you promote your book. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Yeah. All right, Lee, as we kind of wind down here, um, you know, in addition to your own book, do you have any other go-to book recommendations, whether it's, you know, trauma related or not, what would you say? 
Well, like I mentioned earlier, you know, uh, uh, the body keeps the score. It's, a, it's such it's such an amazing, valuable uh, resource for myself. And uh, the the other one is uh, the beast, uh, the, the 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 beauty or the beast of the beauty. I think is the other the one that uh, deals beauty, with okay. anxiety. Yeah. Or, well, you have to make the the beauty before the beast. I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs> I have to clarify that one. That's okay. I'll I'll look it up and I'll find it. I'll have it up here at the show notes page at the Um yeah. All right, Lee, man. You, you like I said, you are one definitely uh, inspiring dude, and I really appreciate you coming on here. Um, but just before we go quickly, so what are you currently doing professionally? So right now, I, I'm, I'm very privileged and honored to work with a, a vulnerable population up here in Attawapiskat First Nation um, in Canada. Uh, and I work through the hospital setting. So I, do, I just do mental health counseling. And I, I do a lot of work with, uh, with individuals and families around just education. And, uh, uh, you know, um, part of my practice is I do a little bit of CBT and maybe a little bit of trauma therapy. Uh, uh, here and there with individuals that, that suffer from, you know, mental illness and addictions. And so my professional life here is, is, is very, is very spectacular. And what I've learned working with vulnerable populations and um, my hope is to be, is to raise more awareness actually for uh, some of the communities up here that where there's a lot of lacking of resources for supports and um, uh, for individuals that have gone through uh, you know, in Canada here with the First Nations has really been impacted by uh, residential schools and, uh, and, and intergenerational trauma that uh, I think needs to be more awareness needs to be brought about it. So that's part of my goal professionally here is to is to be of an ad advocate for a lot of the causes that I find here in the community. And hopefully that will branch out into more other areas for me. So awesome awesome well it's been a pleasure having you on here man and um you're welcome back anytime and we'll set that up soon wonderful thank you so much and and i appreciate your time thank you right, brother. take care man okay